Hi everybody, how are you today? I hope you're doing great, I'm doing great. We are in White Creek, Tennessee, about 30 minutes north of Nashville, and the reason we're here is this property used to be owned by Barbara Mandrell and her family. She had one of the largest cabins in the world built on this property called Fontenelle, and after they sold it and moved out, they put an inn on the property called the Inn of Fontenelle. And before I show you around, I wanna tell you a little bit about her. I think you guys remember her. That she kind of did it all. She was a singer, an actor, a songwriter, television producer. She had a series of top 10 hits and a TV show in the 70s and 80s, and it really helped her become one of country music's most successful vocalists of all time. She was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2009 and was the first performer to win Country Music Association's Entertainer of the Year twice. She also won twice the Country Music Association Female Vocalist of the Year. She has six number one singles, 25 top 10 singles that reached the Billboard country charts, and she hosted her own primetime television show in the 1980s that featured music, dance numbers, and comedy sketches with her two sisters, Earlene and Louise. She played a variety of musical instruments during her career, and it really helped earn her a series of major industry awards. She started dating Ken Dudney when she was 14 years old, and they got married in 1967 and had three kids. The mansion was built in 1988 for her and her family, who lived in the house for 14 years from 1988 to 2002. And in 2002, the property was purchased by Dale Morris and Mark Oswald. The two investors used it to film television productions and video shorts, but in June 2010, the owners made the Fontenelle property into a tourist attraction. And as I said, it's located in White Creek, Tennessee, about 30 minutes north of Nashville. The cabin has 27,000 square feet of interior space and stands three stories and contains more than 20 rooms, 13 bathrooms, five fireplaces, two kitchens, an indoor pool atrium that converts to a dance floor, and an indoor shooting range. It's one of the largest cabins in the world and was filled with memorabilia from the Mandrell family collection. It includes items from Alabama, Kenny Chesney, Big and Rich, Gretchen Wilson, Buck Owens, the Eagles. The hospitality director for the Fontenelle property was Jamie Dudney. That was Barbara's daughter. It included the Inn, the Natchez Hill Winery, Adventure Work Zip Lines, the mansion, the Carl Black Chevy Woods Amphitheater, Trails and Greenways, the Stonehouse Shop, and Vintage Creek Boutique, and the Cafe Fontenelle. But in 2016, Dale Morris became the sole owner of two-thirds of the property and paid Mark $9.87 million to buy the property to have for himself. In 2016, the property owner proposed a $25 million expansion with a bed and breakfast um, to include 136 additional rooms, a banquet hall, a meeting hall, pool and spa, retail space, and would have an additional 31 acres to the complex. But the, the residents of the area objected because they thought it would really uh, ruin the historical character of the area, and it was stalled. But in 2019, the, the complex was purchased by Chicago-based Blue Road Ventures for $14.5 million. And on August 13, 2019, the Fontenelle management announced the property was closing for the time being. As of December that year, Adventures Work Zip Lines and the Greenway Trails are the only areas that are still open. But Blue Road has a vision to bring Fontenelle back to life, which I hope they do. And it will include 151 bedroom cabins, bungalows, yurts throughout the property. We're in White Creek, Tennessee at the Inn and Fontenelle. And I stayed here seven years ago. This is the property uh, where Barbara Mandrell's cabin is. It's the largest cabin in the world. But unfortunately, these were luxury cabin rentals. We stayed in this, this one right here, the North Bunky Suite. But they had some really luxurious um, suites in here. And you would go in the, the main house here in the morning and they would fix your breakfast, whatever you wanted. Um, it has been closed and abandoned, unfortunately. Barbara Mandrell's cabin is up this road. I think the road is blocked. I'm going to drive over there and see what I see. Um, I'm going to take a walk around and see if we can see in any of the cabins. It looks like they've got all the blinds pulled. There's a fan going. 
I don't know if anybody owns the property now, but look at this. These were just so much fun, so beautiful. Um, you could take a tour of her home. My girlfriend Beverly and I stayed here, and uh, we got to tour Barbara's house free because we stayed here. And that morning that we took the tour, it was just she and I. And Kyle Stallings, which is Ke Kelly Pickler's um, keyboard player, actually gave us the tour of Barbara's huge mansion. He serenaded us by the pool. We were the only two there. But it was a lot of fun. This was the kitchen. You're not, I don't know. I think you can see in there. We sat right there and they made our breakfast. I wish we could get in. It's just so beautiful. So peaceful. That's the carriage house suite. Yeah, you can't see anything. It's just done up like southern living perfection. Somebody has the fans on. And I remember there was a duck out here and it attacked me and chased me. And Louise Mandrell was actually uh, the director of marketing here when they had the inn. And then there was a store over there. There, I see a group of people. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if it's a church group. There's just a lot of activities. There was a store. I hope someone buys it and opens it back up. Sure is pretty and peaceful. I'm gonna look at the, this is, I think we're really north of Nashville, so it's a very peaceful, quiet place. I'm gonna look at the home values up here. This was the, the, one of those little bunky houses. The windows are all shut and closed. They look just as nice and new as they did eight years ago when we stayed. I think our parking was about back here. Or we parked right here. And we stayed there. It was a little one bedroom and had one bath. I'm always worried I'm going to get yelled at. I guess if I do, I do. Center, common guest area. Like I said, that road right there is the road up to her cabin. It's a, it's a good little drive up there. I remember we they took us by bus. Okay, we're on the road out to Barbara's house. It's quite a long drive. You go over a bridge and you head up into the woods and you, you drive in the woods for quite a while, then the house opens up. But there were people parked out there and I chickened out. Um, sometimes I'm braver than others, but today I just wasn't that brave. So I turned around and I came back. And this was the entrance to her cabin. And there's a gate. When we stayed here, you had to have a key to get in, but this was Barbara's gate right here. This is where she they would drive in and drive up this road to the cabin. I do see somebody down there walking with dogs. But this is the gate that would Barbara would they'd punch the button and slide it over and it would lock. The very one. And there's somebody down there walking with dogs. Maybe it's the new owner. Not sure. But can't see the cabin. We can at least see the gates, the entrance. Pretty impressive. We'll get back and let you look at the whole thing.
four, it says 4225. But man, I would have loved to have gone up there. But it's not to be today. Maybe they'll open it back up. I surely, to goodness, hope they don't tear it down. Have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Bye.